A man was out of breath, and he was asking someone how many were there. He seemed to be fighting some monsters, and the one he asked replied that there were 3,377,448,090. As the man killed another monster, the count rose to 3,377,448,091. It seems like the numbers were the number of monsters the man killed, as the numbers continued to rise as he continued to kill more monsters, and the number has risen to 3,377,448,096. The man commented that his sword had been smeared with blood and swung his sword to get the blood off of it. The man asked himself when the world became like that as he faced another monster, and as his numbers went up to 3,377,448,097, he mused that things felt like a long, long time ago. On a day a very long time ago, the world was normal, and people filled the streets doing mundane things. Suddenly, a girl exclaimed that her mom should look at the moon. There was a huge warping area in the sky, and it was glowing. The warp in the sky continued to swirl until it became a portal, and just like that, the gate was opened. As the portal became bigger and consumed the sky, the people below filmed it, wondering if it was a lunar eclipse, and one of them joked that the telescope he just bought came in handy. As the man looked through his telescope, he was filled with horror and he was sweating profusely. He could see that the sky was filled with monsters looking at them, and he couldn't help but inquire what the hell was going on up there. Countless strange beasts and monsters were entrenched inside, all ready to attack. Deep within the world of strange beasts, there is a key that could close the gate. And if humans can't find the key in time, the strange beasts will break through the barrier between two spaces and surge into the human world, bringing catastrophic disaster to humanity. Therefore, a selected group of extraordinary humans, awakened ones, appeared. Their mission was to find the key before the monsters emerged. As they fought with the monsters, one of the awakened declared that they would clear the way while one of them would quickly go ahead and find the key. One of them agreed and quickly went ahead to find the key. The key was just quietly floating there, near an entity that looked like water. As the awakened stood in front of the key, he asked himself if it should be safe there. He decided to grab the key. Looking at the huge key in his hand, he questioned if it was the key to closing the gate. Suddenly, the warp in space up in the sky began to disappear, and the people below were surprised, wondering if the moon had restored itself. The awakened have managed to use the key and close the gate, but he wondered what would happen if he rotated it in reverse. The swirling light suddenly appeared again. In that way, the first group of awakened ones discovered that the key could both open and close the gate. And in that controlled state, the demons inside the gate have gone from being a disaster to being valuable material. And so, the era of the awakened ones arrived, and as they formed groups to enter the gate, their leader announced that they should go as it was time to get rich. Five years later, on a rocky mountain, there was a group of people hanging out by the edge of a cliff. One of them was letting go of a very injured man. The man was an ordinary person, and in the eyes of the awakened, they were as insignificant as ants. So as the man fell down the cliff, the three awakened just watched, and they were smiling evilly. The man crashed on the ground, and the impact was so strong that it destroyed the ground beneath him. He was surrounded by monsters and was about to face his impending death. Suddenly, a locket that contained a picture of a pretty blonde girl opened itself. The man's eyes widened as rescue appeared, and he recognized it as Jinyu. A symbol suddenly appeared above the man's head, and he got the power he had always desired. However, as a strong pillar of light shined down on the man, he was unaware that it was the power that he would regret for the rest of his life. At the advanced dungeon, Hill of No Return, someone was fighting with a monster. As the blood spurted out of the monster, the man, who was carrying a huge bag, was in awe. Suddenly, friendly people surrounded him and playfully remarked that he should stop daydreaming as it was their turn to get to work. As the man rummaged through his bag, their leader announced that all the members of the logistics team should get moving as they don't have much time. The man, whose name is Fang Wanjia, was a 19-year-old who was currently a backup logistic member. When the gate opens, the awakened ones need to kill as many monsters as possible before the gate disappears, so they must seize every moment. Therefore, the profession of dungeon logistics emerged. They are responsible for supplying the awakened ones and collecting useful materials from monsters. But although there are awakened ones clearing monsters ahead, if one unfortunately encounters monsters that slipped through the net, it would be a matter of life and death. Even though most of the logistic members are low-level awakened ones and there are very few ordinary people like Fang Wanjia. As Fang Wanjia cut a monster open, 
He looked so disappointed when he looked inside, as there was nothing valuable in there because if it weren't for Jin Yu, who is unconscious in the hospital, Fang Wanjia wouldn't have taken such risks, but with 10,000 per day, the medical expenses for the month will be covered. Meanwhile, an awakened sat on the rocky ground, and he let out a sigh as he mentioned that he was exhausted. He requested to bring a bottle of water over and Fang Wanjia, who declared that he was coming, quickly ran towards the awakened with bottles of water while his hands were still bloody. As Fang Wanjia handed the water to the awakened, the awakened complained and commented to Fang Wanjia that he didn't even wash his hands after touching the monster. But the awakened drank the water anyway, and as Fang Wanjia roamed around, asking if anyone else wanted water, another awakena stated to a man named Kun that Fang Wanjia is useless, so he really doesn't know what Su Huan Yu sees in him. Fang Wanjia approached Kun with a smile and suggested that he should drink some water, but Kun just glared at him. Suddenly, Fang Wanjia dropped the water bottles on the ground. Kun kicked him and sent him flying, calling him a fucking bastard and exclaimed that he actually came over by himself. The other Awakeners quickly charged towards Fang Wanjia with menacing eyes, as Kun instructed to give Fang Wanjia a good beating first, and the kill was on him. One of the awakened looked pleased as he punched Fang Wanjia across the face. Fang Wanjia coughed up as he got kicked in the chest. Kun was the one who kicked Fang Wanjia again, and while he was trembling on the ground, he inquired why they were hitting him. But instead of answering his question, Kun stepped on Fang Wanjia's face and smashed it to the ground. Kun called Fang Wanjia an ignorant brat, asserted that he dared to ask why and questioned him if he wanted him to say it and make a joke out of himself. The mountain looked so tranquil while Fang Wanjia continued to get beat up. A few moments later, Kun left a trail of blood as he dragged Fang Wanjia, and as one of the awakened declared that Kun is so majestic, the other awakened suggested that if Kun wanted to destroy the corpse, he could go to the cliff. Meanwhile, while being dragged, Fang Wanjia queried Kun what he was talking about because he couldn't understand and he queried him if he was mistaking him for someone else. As Kun Hang Fang Wanjia over the cliff, he questioned him for saying that it was a mistake. He remarked that Fang Wanjia was really making him laugh because, even when facing death, he still dares to talk back. Kun called Fang Wanjia by his name and asked him if he had made a mistake. As Kun asked Fang Wanjia how he could continue in that circle if others found out that a weakling like him dared to compete with him, he let go of Fang Wanjia. While Fang Wanjian was falling down, he tried to reach out to Kun and pleaded that he shouldn't do it. But Kun just looked down on him, laughing, and joked that even after death, he was dying like a coward. And the other awakened claimed that Su Huan Yu would only be interested in Fang Wanjia if her eyes were eaten by a dog. Kun instructed to destroy the key and close the dungeon because he wanted Fang Wanjia to be dead. Meanwhile, Fang Wanjia crashed on the ground. The ground beneath him was crushed by the impact, and he groaned in pain. As he winced in pain, Fang Wanjia was surprised that he was still alive. Suddenly, a huge monster appeared and towered over him. As the monster was about to grab him, Fang Wanjia tried to run away, but he muttered that his body was not obeying him. Fang Wanjia was slammed on the ground again as the monster grabbed him with its huge claws. The monster was about to eat him, and he was so helpless that all he could do was protect himself with his arms. Suddenly, Fang Wanjia was surprised that he was saved as another monster appeared and attacked the monster that was about to eat him. Fang Wanjia quickly ran away as he knew that the entry of another monster wouldn't bring him any luck, but the monsters were all gathered at the scent of his blood. All the ferocious monsters were chasing Fang Wanjia who was already out of breath, and he cursed as he exclaimed that he was still injured. Suddenly, a small flying monster appeared right behind Fang Wanjia and roared at him. Fang Wanjia grabbed a stone as he declared that even a little thing like that monster dares to bully him. He threw the stone at the monster and ordered that it should get away from him. Fang Wanjia managed to hit the monster's eye right in the center of it. While the monster screamed in pain as blood spurted out of its eyes, tentacles began growing out of its body. As the monster continued to grow its tentacles, Fang Wanjia looked so horrified as he seemed to have recognized it. The monster has grown so large, larger than the other monsters, and Fang Wanjia asked himself if it was the legendary tentacle mutation. Fang Wanjia asserted that it was over, and he was not able to react as one of the monster's tentacles suddenly appeared in front of him. The monster sent Fang Wanjia flying when it hit him with its tentacles, and the impact was so strong that the ground shattered into pieces as Fang Wanjia crashed on it. Fang Wanjia coughed up blood, and when he noticed the hole in his chest, he admitted that he really couldn't go back. As he watched as the chains of his locket got destroyed, Fang Wanjia reiterated that he really couldn't go back anymore. Fang Wanjia was gasping for air while his locket rolled away from him. 
When the locket stopped rolling, it sprung open and revealed a picture of a pretty blonde girl. As the monsters surrounded him, Fang Wanjia tried to reach out for the locket while he was apologizing to Jin Yu. Fang Wanjia declared that he promised that when he earned enough money, he would take Jin Yu to the best hospital and consult the best doctor, when suddenly, one of the monsters stomped on his hand. Fang Wanjia cried as he admitted that it looked like he wouldn't be able to keep his promise at that time. His tears mixed with the pool of his blood as he apologized to Jin Yu again. Suddenly, a small light began to appear at the ripple of Fang Wanjia's blood. The monsters were baffled when the light began to intensify. The light suddenly got so intense that it became a strong pillar of light shooting up towards the sky, and it destroyed the monsters that it hit. It got so strong that both the ground trembled and the clouds in the sky parted. Fang Wanjia's eyes were already half open. He was surprised when he observed an angel flying above him, filling the area with warm, bright energy. The angel's feathers spread all over the place as she came down to approach Fang Wanjia. Suddenly, a system asked the angel if she wanted to gift the divine angel talent, to which the angel confirmed yes. The system also asked her to confirm if she knew that she would lose the talent, and she affirmed yes. The system asked the angel if she wanted to inform the person, to which she responded no. And as she finished answering the question, the system notified her that the talent gifting was in progress. As the angel placed her hand on Fang Wanjia's temple and began to disappear, she called him Little Jai. Fang Wanjia suddenly opened his eyes widely as his temple began to glow. While the angel was transferring her talent to Fang Wanjia, she told him that he should take her talent and live well. When the transfer was finished, the angel's sign was already on top of Fang Wanjia's head, and he sat down, looking so astonished. Fang Wanjia's eyes were wide open as he looked up at the symbol that was hovering over his head. Suddenly, his shirt got ripped as he grew the angel's wings. As he opened his hand, flames started to appear around it, and the flames turned into a sword, which Fang Wanjia immediately grabbed. Fang Wanjia screamed, and he released a strong, fiery aura. He flew up into the sky, and the monsters looked up at him. Fang Wanjia effortlessly swung his sword and created two slashing auras that crossed each other. That aura became so huge, and it dragged itself on the ground while it moved forward. The monsters on the ground that were hit by the aura were immediately shredded into pieces. Blood exploded everywhere, and it looked like fireworks as Fang Wanjia flew by the monsters. Suddenly, the system warned Fang Wanjia, and while calling him the Awakened One, the system requested that he adapt to the talent as soon as possible. But Fang Wanjia just ignored the warning, and he continued to spill blood as he glared ahead. One monster was still alive, groaning in pain, and Fang Wanjia was flying towards it. Fang Wanjia flew through the monster, destroying it, and as he called the tentacle mutation, he commanded that it should get out of there. The tentacle mutation immediately showed itself in front of Fang Wanjia, and as Fang Wanjia called it a bastard, he announced that he was coming. The tentacle mutation attacked Fang Wanjia with its claws, and Fang Wanjia blocked its attack by swinging his sword. The system warned Fang Wanjia again, stating that the talent use lower limit was approaching the threshold. The tentacle mutation fired a beam of aura from its eye towards Fang Wanjia. Fang Wanjia managed to block the beam by using his wings, but he was struggling, and he wondered if he was being crushed. Fang Wanjia remarked that he was just an ordinary person, and in the real world, the awakened ones all looked down on him. Suddenly, the system gave an error notification and warned Fang Wanjia that he and the awakened talent were not compatible. Fang Wanjia was losing his wings, and as the tentacle mutation swung its arms, Fang Wanjia declared that after coming there, those monsters also wanted to kill him. The system notified Fang Wanjia that it was about to collapse, and suddenly, a dark liquid started to invade the white part of his eye. As the mutated tentacle's claws were about to hit Fang Wanjia, Fang Wanjia was surrounded by a dark aura, and he proclaimed that he was going to kill all of them. Meanwhile, the system was crashing, and it tried to reboot, but there was an error and it crashed. There was a huge explosion as the mutated tentacles attack landed on Fang Wanjia. But the mutated tentacles attack did not reach Fang Wanjia, as Fang Wanjia used his sword to pierce its hand. And he laughed as he asserted that they were bastards who looked down on him. Suddenly, Fang Wanjia's sword began to tremble, and the same dark aura that invaded his eye also invaded his sword. The dark aura wrapped itself around the sword and surged through the mutated tentacle's hand, where it was pierced. The mutated tentacle pulled its hand back, and it was so surprised when it saw Fang Wanjia, whose entire body was being wrapped by a dark aura. The symbol above Fang Wanjia's head shattered, and his eyes glimmered ominously as he reiterated that he was going to kill all of them. The mutated tentacle was threatened. It used its tentacle to attack Fang Wanjia, 
who looked so sinister. Fang Wanjia has been consumed by the dark aura while he repeatedly insisted that the mutated tentacle should come. Suddenly, the system notified Fang Wanjia that there was a talent mutation. The dark aura became azure flames, and armor began to appear on his body. The tentacles were about to hit Fang Wanjia while he was still being consumed by darkness. But the tentacles were shredded into pieces when Fang Wanjia screamed and released his dark aura. The mutated tentacle was alarmed when it saw the damage Fang Wanjia had done. Fang Wanjia glared at the mutated tentacle with his menacing, bloodshot eyes. As the dark aura that was consuming Fang Wanjia's body began to dissipate from his feet, it revealed the armor that he was wearing. The dark aura also disappeared from his face. The system notified Fang Wanjia that he had awakened the undead angel talent. And the dark aura completely dissipated from Fang Wanjia's entire body, revealing that he was wearing full body armor. Fang Wanjia raised his sword, which was still oozing a dark aura, towards the mutated tentacle. He announced that he would give the mutated tentacle a chance to call all its mates over there. The mutated tentacle quickly flew up in the sky in a panic. It roared loudly to call its mates over. Suddenly, multiple flying monsters came flying towards the area. As the sky got filled with flying monsters, Fang Wanjia inquired of the mutated tentacle if it could only call that level of monster. Fang Wanjia jumped off the ground. He looked so menacing as he was about to swing his sword at the monsters. Fang Wanjia's movements were so fast that only the swinging of his sword could be seen and the blood that was being spilled. As Fang Wanjia landed on the ground, the monsters in the air exploded like fireworks. He quickly turned to look behind him, and he charged towards the mutated tentacle. The mutated tentacle looked so astonished when it saw that Fang Wanjia was coming. Fang Wanjia raised his sword over the mutated tentacle, and he questioned it if it declared that he would let it go. He plunged his sword into the mutated tentacle, and its blood spurted in all directions. A few moments later, another batch of flying monsters arrived, and they looked like bees. Fang Wanjia immediately recognized that it was a swarm of King Corpse bees, and he remarked that it was finally something interesting because it was the first time he had seen so many of them at once. But he was unfazed, and he mentioned that it didn't matter what kind of monster they were. Fang Wanjia snapped his fingers, and as a bright orb of light appeared and killed all the King Corpse bees, he proclaimed that starting from that day, those who intend to harm him must die. Looking at the bright orb of light in the sky, Fang Wanjia asked if it should be blue, and he observed that it seems that the complete awakening is still in process. Fang Wanjia collected the orb from the sky. He looked around him. Looking at the corpses around him, Fang Wanjia was baffled that there were still so many left. Picking up a crystal from the monster's corpse, Fang Wanjia remarked that the crystals that all the awakened ones were so hungry for were currently everywhere. He tried to absorb the crystal, but the system notified him that he was unable to absorb it. His armor began to disappear, and Fang Wanjia was flabbergasted. The spiritual energy in the crystal is the main source for awakened ones to enhance their powers, and absorbing and selling crystals is the biggest motivation for awakened ones to enter dungeons. Fang Wanjia asserted that he had already become an awakened one, so he asked why he couldn't absorb the spiritual energy of the crystal, and he tried to absorb it once more. He was agitated, but he was startled when he felt the dark aura that was flowing towards him. Fang Wanjia let go of the crystal, and he declared that he felt like something had entered his body, but it definitely was not the crystal. Observing his surroundings, Fang Wanjia speculated that it was the death spirit of the monster. Fang Wanjia was unaware of the remaining monster that was about to attack him as he was so focused on the death aura that was entering his body, and he proposed that if the death aura from the monster's body could be converted into energy, he doesn't need crystals anymore. But suddenly, Fang Wanjia cut the monster that was sneaking up on him in half, and he exclaimed that just killing monsters could make him continuously stronger. After knowing that, Fang Wanjia immediately rushed back to the top of the mountain. He stated that it was already easy for him to take revenge on Jiang Kun, Kun's full name. Fang Wanjia quickly arrived on top, but no one was around when he landed. He was also surprised that the gate was nowhere to be found, and as he inquired where it was, he noticed something shiny on the ground. It was the key to the gate, and Fang Wanjia wondered if Zhang Kun wanted to trap him there forever. Fang Wanjia clenched the key in his hand, and as he called Zhang Kun a bastard, he vowed that he was not going to let him do that. Walking away from the key, Fang Wanjia concluded that all he could do was improve his power until he could think of a way out. So in the first year trapped in the dungeon, Fang Wanjia killed 175,565 monsters, and at that point, he no longer needed to wear undead armor to deal with ordinary monsters. Fang Wanjia crushed the arm of a monster he was fighting by stepping on it. 
he grabbed its shell to reveal the meat inside it. Fang Wanjia ate the monster's meat, and he recalled that during that year in the dungeon, he remembered something important. One year ago, in an apartment complex, while Jin Yu was reading a monster guide, Fang Wanjia questioned her what she was looking at. It was an image of Seraphis the Unsealer, and Jin Yu explained that Fang Wanjia should look at it as it was quite popular in the Awakened Ones community because it is said that getting one could directly buy a house on the Third Ring Road. Jin Yu mentioned that it lives in an endless sea and wanders between reality and illusion, and when the world inside the gate restarts, it will appear, generating the key. Fang Wanjia queried Jin Yu what it meant when the world inside the gate restarts, and Jin Yu replied that generally, when all the monsters in the dungeon are killed, that world will restart. Back in the present, Fang Wanjia dropped the monster's arm he was eating when he remembered what Jin Yu mentioned. He began fighting monsters with all his might, and he declared that killing all the monsters there was the only way for him to get out. In the next year, Fang Wanjia stated that he killed 386,170 monsters. In the third year, he reported that he killed 1,588,702 monsters. Fang Wanjia let out a sigh, and he looked so exhausted. He looked like he was losing hope, and he asked himself why he felt like he could never kill all the monsters there. A few moments later, Fang Wanjia stood on top of a rock near the shore. Suddenly, multiple gleaming eyes appeared in the water and Fang Wanjia prepared himself to fight. Fang Wanjia asserted that the endless stream of monsters before all originated from that sea. Something suddenly caught Fang Wanjia's attention. He looked so astonished as he looked up at the creature that was towering over him. It was a really huge monster, and Fang Wanjia recalled that in the past 10 years, the level of monsters has been getting higher and higher. And at that time, an S-class monster appeared. Fang Wanjia put on his armor and charged forward, filled with determination. But a few moments later, Fang Wanjia crashed headfirst on the ground. As he stood up from the rubble, Fang Wanjia warned that if he was not careful, he would die. Fang Wanjia swiftly moved up, and he was so fast that only his aura could be seen. The S-class monster was gathering energy into its mouth to fire its attack, and Fang Wanjia was charging straight towards it. Suddenly, blood was spilled. Fang Wanjia looked so injured, he was trembling and out of breath. A huge chunk of his torso was gone, and while he was bleeding and trembling in pain, Fang Wanjia confessed that sometimes he really feels like just dying. Despite his injuries, he was still facing a ton of monsters who had emerged from the sea. Fang Wanjia began absorbing the death aura of the S-class monster he just defeated behind him, and he remarked that he couldn't forget Jiang Kun's face. His injury quickly healed, and he admitted that he also couldn't stop thinking about Jin Yu who was waiting for him. Fang Wanjia jumped towards the monster, and he insisted that he must kill all the monsters and capture Seraphis the Unsealer. He was exerting his best so much so that his eyes were bloodshot, and he vowed that he had to get out of there. In the 20th year, there was a glowing tree in the middle of a grassy plain. Fang Wanjia was hiding on that tree, and that year, he didn't even kill a single monster. It was because there is only one last monster left in the entire dungeon, a griffin, which is attracted by the light of the treasure tree, making it the perfect ambush spot for them. Fang Wanjia immediately jumped in the air to lunge at the griffin, and he announced that it was an excellent opportunity. He successfully landed his attack on the griffin's back, and blood spurted all over the place. Fang Wanjia cut the griffin's back to the point that its spine was already showing. But suddenly, the wound began to close up. The griffin raised its feet to attack Fang Wanjia. Fang Wanjia managed to dodge the griffin's attack, but he lamented that he couldn't kill it for a whole year, and it was a pain in the ass. The griffin began gathering energy in its mouth. It fired the energy it gathered at Fang Wanjia, causing a huge explosion, but Fang Wanjia managed to dodge it. Suddenly, the griffin flew up in the air to summon multiple warps in space that looked like each of them had tremendous energy gathered inside them. As those spaces began firing at Fang Wanjia, he cursed and remarked that the griffin was using that move again. Fang Wanjia looked so agitated as he confessed that he was really useless. As he dodged those beams of aura, Fang Wanjia noted that it had been a whole year and he was still being chased and attacked by that move. He continued to dodge those attacks, but as he looked back, he observed that it was so fast and that it was getting closer. Fang Wanjia decided to face those beams of aura and snap his fingers. The orb he used before suddenly appeared, but instead of being a light, it was dark, and it absorbed the griffin's attack. But the griffin laughed and declared that he was just waiting for Fang Wanjia to turn around and defend himself. Suddenly, Fang Wanjia was startled when the warps in space appeared behind him. Fang Wanjia was no longer able to react to dodge the attacks, and he took them directly to his back. The griffin looked pleased as he watched Fang Wanjia be obliterated by his attack. 
he stated that, as an opponent, Fang Wanjia satisfied him. The griffin attacked Fang Wanjia with its talons, and as Fang Wanjia, who tried to dodge it, got grazed by it, he acknowledged that the griffin's magic attacks, speed, and strength were almost unbeatable. Half of Fang Wanjia's face was damaged, and he expressed that the griffin was the only Super S-class monster he had ever encountered. The griffin suggested that Fang Wanjia should become his slave, and he might spare his life. Summoning those warps in space above them, the griffin inquired of Fang Wanjia what he thought about it, if he would agree or not. Fang Wanjia's eyes glimmered sinisterly as he acknowledged that the griffin was truly a high-level monster, and he could even interrogate a human, revealing his face, which was still healing. Fang Wanjia queried the griffin if he was still considered human in his current state. The griffin was enraged, and he accused Fang Wanjia of still daring to crack jokes even when facing death. He fired his attacks on Fang Wanjia, who no longer made an effort to dodge them. The griffin's attacks just went past Fang Wanjia, and he disclosed that the black wave inside him was triggered when he was near death earlier. The griffin tried to attack Fang Wanjia with its talons, but they simply went past him, and Fang Wanjia revealed that for a short period, all attacks would be ineffective against him. Fang Wanjia cut the griffin's feet which startled him, and Fang Wanjia revealed that he could deal damage that prevents all monsters from self-healing. Fang Wanjia indicated that the griffin shouldn't have given him a chance to catch his breath earlier. He lunged at the griffin while swinging his sword, and he asserted that it should just go and die. The griffin was confused when Fang Wanjia unleashed his skill, Undead Necklace Slash. Fang Wanjia performed a powerful slashing aura that cut the mountain tops in the distance along with the griffin's head. Fang Wanjia watched as the headless corpse of the griffin lay in its own pool of blood. He looked up and announced that the restart had begun. The skies opened up, and a soft light was shining down on the dungeon. Fang Wanjia watched the light intently. Suddenly, the light began forming the image of a creature. Fang Wanjia's eyes widened when he immediately recognized it as Seraphis the Unsealer. He quickly jumped off the ground. Wings made up of a dark aura emerged from Fang Wanjia's back. Using his wings, Fang Wanjia looked so determined as he flew towards Seraphis the Unsealer. The form of Seraphis the Unsealer got clearer as Fang Wanjia got near it. Fang Wanjia hovered on top of it. He grabbed Seraphis the Unsealer, and his hand sank onto it like a mattress. Suddenly, his hand sank so deep that it looked like it was submerged in water. Seraphis the Unsealer was alarmed when it noticed Fang Wanjia. It began to panic. Fang Wanjia instructed that it should not move and to give the key to him quickly. He looked so desperate as he released his dark aura, and he demanded that Seraphis the Unsealer hurry up and give him the key. Fang Wanjia was surprised when Seraphis the Unsealer began wobbling. The Seraphis the Unsealer kept wobbling that it looked like an undone shoelace. It still kept wobbling, and its body had begun looking like a maze. Suddenly, the Seraphis the Unsealer stopped wobbling, and it sat in front of Fang Wanjia with the key inside it. Fang Wanjia quickly grabbed the key. Tears fell down Fang Wanjia's eyes, and he laughed and exclaimed that he finally got it. If you love this series, please comment part 2 for the next one.